Hello, viewers. I'm SB, and welcome back to Oakenfold here in Oakenfold. Uh, we are absolutely killing it on crates. <laughs> a really strong position overall here. I have high hopes. I have high, ho high hopes for this run. So, of course, we are going to have monkey problems. There's going to be void monkeys on every... Ooh. We might go this way just because there is one level that doesn't have any void monkeys in it. Okay, it's actually true on both sides. So what is this one? This is just a two-wave, no side objective. This seems very easy. There's an expediter, which is uh, problematic for sure. Three, three waves. There's a robo-sweeper on this one. I think I'm going to take the... Uh, let's take this path. There's a couple of short missions here. A little the void monkeys are always just gonna be scary there's nothing you can really do about that uh all right so punching the void monkey now lets us set up like a grenade to shove it off to the side later or honestly we could even just let it let it do its thing here um destroy the crate but also block a spawn it's not terrible And then if I throw a grenade, we can we can bash these skitters off of each other a couple of times pretty easily. Oh right, the hook. Yeah, sorry, the hook does contact damage. So I want to do the hook first. Damage to the target pulls the one tile toward you. What do you get out of being elite? Jumps toward you instead of away from you. Right, right, right. Um, it's kind of fine though. So if I step here, you jump toward me, throw that grenade to just move you out to safety. Bank one here. That allows me to just punch the skitter completely into pieces. And then we can deal with this bombardier bug in a variety of ways. Yeah, just throw a grenade at it, whatever. Does this, this has a range of up to three, so we can just kill the void monkey as well. I think that's probably the move, right? Just clear the board. Yep, this void monkey is also going to step adjacent to me because of course it is. So, so we step away, hook you, and then, yeah. And then from there, it's like pretty straightforward. I'm going to go check the constructor here. I don't think we need this, so we can buy one of these two items that the game has been offering us. Barrier is definitely interesting. But I'm kind of curious, it deals one damage to every enemy within its range. Do I not? Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I am a time unit short. Okay, let me, uh, let me back it up then. Yeah, I totally spaced on that. Uh, we can step to here, just kill the bug, and then walk to block a spawn, and then I can, I can bank one time unit and do the construction. Cool. Oh, I do have to actually bank the thing. Yeah. There we go. So. Interesting. Range 1 to 2 is a really strange way to express this idea. Whatever, you're already elite. Uh, and then I really would love for you to not be there. I can't block again. So 
So I think I have to just kill you with the hook. And then, like, step back to here and use this thing so that the skitter dies when it blocks the spawn. And I think just pass from here. say that one thing I one thing I do like a lot about um, the systems here is I like the idea of the energy that you have to go pick up and in addition to you having to actually touch it to gather it which you know exerts some pressure on your position if you let a bunch of energy spawn and you're not grabbing it it has additional potential detrimental effects and that the enemies can pick it up and do stuff with it so I think that that creates an interesting kind of tension uh, I am going to push you out to there, and then... Ah, when it becomes elite, it regains its force field. That I did not count on. Let me... Hold on, let me... Oh, right, I was time-locked. I can't just bash it off of myself. I hate that, but I do think I have to do it because I have to get far enough away to throw this. Throw the grenade to get rid of the void monkey. Push you again. There we go. And then just bank two more time units. Feels pretty okay. That's an outcome. haven't left myself in much of a position to craft from here, but also I don't know that I need to do much more crafting. Heck of a lot of skitterers. Uh, okay, so you are the blue one. Right, so now this skitter will kill that one before it gets to act, and then it will die blocking a spawn. And you can just kill the old-fashioned way. Okay, pretty easy. What do I get for keeping you alive? Not very much, actually. <laughs> the incentive is not strong. Hook range up is not super exciting. Hook crate slipping is kind of cool. Ah, but with implosive, it's, yeah, it's a bad fit for implosive. So it's just like, do I want to be able to hook at range four or do I want virulent death? Probably I want virulent death. And then we just block something so that we don't get six enemy spawns simultaneously, which should be against the law. Why does the game think this sort of thing is okay? I'll tell you, I definitely, um... I definitely do not think that the, like, a difficulty above this is a reasonable thing to do. <laughs> so you have the Robo Sweeper. Ah, yes, that's right, a four-point teleport. So you can actually... <sighs> just kill this roach like that. Yeah, that makes my life a lot easier. All right, what if we just killed everything all the time forever? Like really easily, in fact. <laughs> It's a powerful kit. There's no two ways about that. 
All right, so we have a Robo Sweeper here who would like to be able to just move around sweeping. And I guess I'll see what I can do on that front. Let's check what's in the crafting bench this time. Conductive hook is definitely compelling. I don't think I like explosive power glove as much. Manifestor is really hard to use. So I think let's just go ahead and take that because we have the resources for it right now. And then step here, kill you, get that conductive hook. Wait a tick, because I don't want to get pushed by the Robo Sweeper. And then I think we just wait here. Please, please don't do that. I have high hopes for the Robo Sweeper. I think there's a, there's a decent chance it's going to get to finish the thing. <clears throat> uh, so I think we probably just grenade you. And then I... I guess actually like the really efficient way to do that would be to fire this thing from like this position. Cause I could do one damage to all of the enemies simultaneously. And then when I step here, those two just splat. And it doesn't really matter how I do this. So let's see, one, two, yeah, we have we have enough movement to be able to do that and then still step over here and finish that job. And then I like I have resources again. I could craft again if I need to. Feeling pretty okay about that outcome. All right, all void monkeys all the time, but it's only two waves. Also, this is simply not the enemy list that we were given, um, which is weird. So I can just throw a punch to get you moved aside, and then we can figure figure out the rest of your shit later. Can do a pull on this thing. Step here, then here, a grenade will put these two in positions where we don't have to think about them anymore. And then... Uh, power, yeah, power, blow, power glove bonus damage seems fine. Oh, I need a little bit more energy. So actually, I don't even... Step over here, I grab energy instead? Yeah, yeah, we block the only spawn. Right, of course we do. There we go. Okay. I feel like that was a very successful level, and it went down real, real easy. <laughs> it's a shame that, like, there are some situations, like, where a single enemy spawn, again, because you have such a, like, narrow range of utility, necessarily only being one person, there are situations where even one enemy spawn changes a situation from very easy to deal with to functionally impossible to deal with. So even though we are getting levels that are extremely easy, 
We also really can't go up a level of difficulty. Like it's not gonna it's not going to be interesting or fun to do so. It's very awkward. So we can just move you to a position where you're not doing anything of actual value. Same with you. And then I need to get in position to do some damage to the Void Mother. Okay, just reset you now. How do I best deal with this? Because I could... This lets the skitter survive to deal damage, which I don't love. But I don't know that I can actually do anything about it. I think I'm just going to step out of the way. So the splitter is going to kill the railer, and then it's going to die itself. In theory. I could also just fire this thing. Oh, right. This would kill the skitter because it'll do one damage to the skitter, but it will also virulent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just fire the toy and then I will step here and block this spawn. All right. So you're easy enough to stop. Uh, I think I'm just going to hit you with the hook. Yeah, I don't think it really matters. Well, but do I want to do that yet? I probably want to give you a little bit more time, actually. So maybe I... How do I want to deal with the dual three health splitters? It is a little troublesome. Let's kill the void monkey. Step to here. Step to here. Damage the void mother at the last possible moment. Just push you off the map. Do I need to grab this so that other enemies don't get it? Probably not. And I think moving up here is going to end up being a mistake because we'll have to spend another move to get back down. So I think I'm just going to end my turn here. We'll reset the Void Mama um, at the beginning of this turn. We can let the crafting bench die. That's actually fine. Yeah, so let's, like, do this, throw a grenade at the Void Mother. And then... So I'm okay letting the crafting bench go. I don't want to let the crate go necessarily, though. So I think we, like, step up to here and throw a grenade at the Void Mother. Yeah, good enough for me. Do I want to just... I think I'll step a little bit more central and then end. Uh, 
Okay, this feels pretty under control at this point. Uh, and then... Yeah, can I kill you? Is there a situation where I can actually make this happen? My punch does three damage, so... Just out of curiosity, because I'm, I'm curious how different the ending is if we do that. So, I would want to save more damage for you. I can walk this kid into you. Yeah, this is this is going to be a kill. So then the question is, one, two, three. So I'm not going to be able to stop the splitter. I don't know, I will. If I use the hook for this, I can throw a grenade there. So we step to here and then grenade the splitter to a position of uselessness. And we do, in fact, end with no enemies alive. Hooray! I hope we can share this planet in peace someday. What? Who is, who is the we? In, okay, whatever. Because the thing is, everybody except me is dead. Um, okay, apparently that was a much higher final score. All right, well, you know, endings. Um, is this going to be any different? Probably not, right? Because, like, this part, we can't even see whether the Void Mother's alive from up here. Yeah, okay, so we get the, we get the same ending. Um, I know I had talked about maybe doing one more run just to, to chalk up a win with each of the mindsets. But I kind of feel like we get it, right? I think I think that is that is that thing more or less solved. I guess there's maybe it would be interesting to like really try to force a an insane run through, but I'm I'm feeling resolved on this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and call this here uh, for today and for the series. That's Oakenfold. It's a very pretty one of these i really i really think there should be more games that are doing an into the breach thing so i appreciate the hell out of this um when y'all come back next time tomorrow there's just there's gonna be something new here it'll be a fascinating experience for all of us finding out what that is and we'll see you then